to break the worm. Oh, oh. You found them. Oh, the tank, dude, Nat. Nat. She's like, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. What's up, guys? Welcome back. I'm coming to you guys with a quick video um, because of the fact uh, the last couple weeks, I've been catching a lot on this technique, and I wanted to give you a breakdown on it, right? I just wanted to give all the guys, anybody who's asking questions or maybe doesn't have enough or very much confidence in this technique, um, the information they need to go out there and you know, catch fish uh, right now while these fish are, are spawning, basically, right? Um, the technique is drop shotting. Uh, a lot of guys know how to drop shot. They know how to drop shot the lakes. But I feel like not a lot of guys know how to drop shot the delta. It's different. It's not the same. Um, it's not it's not casting out there, dragging around, all that stuff. You're just going to catch grass. You're not going to catch fish. You're going to get frustrated with it. You're going to put it down. So I wanted to come to you guys with this video and go over everything you need to know about drop shying the Delta. All right, guys, so if you know me, I am not a finesse fisherman. I like swim baits, I like punching, I like frogging. I like muscling these fish around on heavy line and getting them in the boat. I don't like to play them. I don't like letting them uh, get in the grass or whatever, right? And uh, so this is a you know something that I've been learning over the past couple years, um, how to get better at so I can still get those big bites and, you know, um, not be missing opportunities by only punching, frogging, all that stuff, right? Because yeah, you can always get a bite on that on the delta. It seems like, but there has there's like a you know a month period every year for me uh, in which the finesse is king on the delta, and that's that's usually around that March April time frame when these fish are more concerned with spawning, right? Uh, they don't necessarily want to come up on a frog. They don't necessarily want to eat the punch. Um, they don't you know, always want to eat reaction. Uh, you know, they'll chase things. They might, you know, be interested for a second, but then they shy away because they're, they're concerned with spawning. So you kind of got to get things in there and leave it in there um, to where they get kind of more territorial at it uh, without actually knowing where their beds are, right? Uh, because you can't just bed fish all day. And they, and a lot of times you want to be, you want to get your bait in there before they know you're there. Uh, and that's where this technique, uh, drop shotting, uh, is, is, is deadly, right? So right here, this is my drop shot setup on the Delta, right? Most guys know, uh, this is my favorite color worm. You know, there's, there's a few different worm colors I'll get, I'll talk about as well, uh, that I, I throw, but, um, this MM3, seven inch, uh, MM3 fat worm, fantastic. Uh, this is a one-aught owner uh, cover shot hook. That is a fantastic hook, and that's the hook I use uh, for majority of my drop shotting. And then, you know, a lead weight. I don't need tungsten. I'm not feeling bottom. I'm not doing that that stuff. I lose too many weights in the in the levees, you know, the rocks and all that stuff anyway. So lead weight. Um, most important part, tiny short leader. This leader is not more than three or four inches. That is key. Uh, when we're talking drop shotting guys, especially on the Delta, because my theory on it is these fish eat things out of the grass. They love eating things out of the grass. Uh, so when you have that leader, that's six, 12 inches, whatever you do on the lakes, um, it's too far out of the grass because the weight gets caught in the grass, but that worm is out here and that's too far away. These fish look at it and it's not natural to them. When it's only three inches out of the grass and it's almost kind of like hitting the grass, especially that seven inch worm, like the tail of it's probably tapping the grass. I think it looks more natural to them. It might look like something trying to get in the grass or get out of the grass. 
something dying. I, I don't know. I think they just like that. Um, as well as when you put it right on a bed, it's going to be closer to the sweet spot. It's not above the sweet spot. It's right on the sweet spot. So, you know, that's why I do that shorter leader. And that's actually probably the biggest secret to drop shying the Delta, uh, is a shorter leader in my opinion. Now talking about fishing this, this bait, right? I throw it on a spinning rod right here. A, uh, this is a 3000 series si or size, but 2,500 is great. Um, this is a Vanford. I just picked this one up. I like the Stratic CI4, uh, the Daiwa Fuego. Those are, those are great spinning reels. Uh, faster gear ratio, if I can get away with it. I think this is like a 6.4 or 6.2 or something like that. Uh, but the faster, the better. 10 pound braid to 10 to 12 pound four carbon leader. The leader I only have is probably about six or seven feet. You don't need a super long leader. Um, you know, you don't, it's not the lakes, not super clear water. These fish aren't line shot. I know guys that drop shot straight braid. I don't do that because I don't want to necessarily miss fish. Not saying you will, I'm just saying for me, my own mental, I like to have a four carbon leader. Um, and this is on a, a Mega Bass Levante. I also do an Orochi. Um, it's a little bit stiffer. It's a, I believe it's a seven foot. Yeah, it's a seven foot. It's like a shaky head rod, a little bit stiff. Um, medium heavy, I think, fast action. Uh, definitely a, a little bit of a stiffer, slightly stiffer uh, drop, or spinning rod for this technique because I'm kind of swinging on them, right? I'm not, I'm not reeling hook set like you do with a little nose hook drop shot. I'm gonna feel them hit it and I'm gonna swing on them, right? And I'm gonna have my drag set and, and so, right? But I'm not dragging this uh, around. I'm not, none of that. You're gonna catch crash, you're gonna get frustrated. You guys need to flip it. the appetizing part of it but you know oh. Uh -oh. okay Need yep. a net. yeah that's a better one You're gonna flip the holes in the grass, uh, especially on those lower tides. You are gonna flip next to tule points. Um, you know, once you fish the delta enough, you start seeing the high percentage spots, especially on those areas where they're gonna put their beds. Um, you know, those different grass species that I talk about on my Instagram, if you guys follow me on Instagram. I always, I, I mean, the last couple weeks I've been throwing out different, uh, you know, either aquatic vegetation or um, just, vegetation different uh, plants that grow on the, the levee walls that these fish will tend to spawn next to um and use for uh for concealment and cover so i you know i i that, those are the areas i target with my casts and it's just it's pitching pitching and flipping uh down the bank and you know you'll you'll find areas where they're just a stretch of bank where they're just spawning right and then that's when you pick them off um the trough too, that's actually more important than flipping the holes. Um, the depth of your trough and, and on, on different tides, right? So, you know, on that low tide, if you can find a deep trough on the low tide, you best bet they're going to be in it. You know what I mean? Um, they, they will find those areas like that. And especially banks that are protected from the north wind, guys. Uh, you know, standard spawning activity they like banks that are protected from the north wind so talking the delta with a bunch of levee walls 
any of the levee walls that face south <laughs> they're protected from the north wind um there could be potential for spawners there um now yes i'm making this video a little late for you guys the spawning activity is 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 i think they're full-blown spawn right now i think they're full-blown spawn pushing post-spawn um, that's my opinion on things some guys might say you're wrong um i'm sure there's still some pre-spawners to be found in some weird places of the delta but i think majority of these fish are spawn or spawning and are pushing post spawn out there and that's why you're you kind of got these big big limits coming on finesse right now like somebody had 39 pounds last weekend on sinkos and drop shots um yeah <laughs> in franks which is absurd uh so that's another reason why i'm bringing this video to you guys because i want somebody to go out there and catch pb um you know this weekend or whatever right now i talked about the worm color margarita mutilator or mm3 either or uh because it's two different colors um one has red flake one doesn't this is my go-to because you flip a worm up there something about mm3 just i've watched big females swim 15 feet to go hit it i don't know why they just like it it's bold it's dark um and they like it another color i like is red crawler uh it's like a this is a seven inch it's kind of got a reddish pink brown color on bottom uh that's a fantastic color on the delta and then my next favorite color is going to be green this green like weenie i think it's green weenie or something like that it's kind of got like more of a natural green color with some i think blue or green flake in it that's my my top three i those are the the worms i fish if i'm gonna be throwing a worm on the delta those are the ones i throw but like i said i would say you know predominantly i'm throwing this uh i can't get it, it's all wrapped up now this uh mm3 color you know in a variety of different sizes i do like that seven inch size this time of year for the big ones um uh, but i will you know drop it down to a six or a four um depending on what they like you know sometimes that's where you kind of have to let the fish tell you what they want uh that's always going to be a thing now you may ask why not a cinco this is a theory that i have and you know this is where i go full mad scientist on you guys right um, some people think I'm stupid or whatever, but I think about things a lot, right? There are some days out there where you flip a drop shot in that trough and you don't get big bites. You just don't. And then there's days you flip that Cinco in that trough and they, and you get big bites. So my thought process on that is based on different notes I've taken and different, you know, times I've experienced it is there are some days out there when they will swim up for a Senko where they just want that thing falling and they will swim to it and eat it on the fall. Um, or once it hits bottom and it's just sitting there, right? And then they eat it. Um, then there's other days where I think they're just lazy. They don't want to swim towards anything. And that drop shot gets it down there and sits there and just stays right where, right where they're at. Um, so it, you have, they have to expel less energy to eat it, I think. Now, I could be wrong. That's just kind of the thought process I'm thinking on. Um, drop shot gets it right down there and right on them. And the Cinco kind of has to fall to them, right? Now, that's kind of it, guys. I mean, I've, I've kind of covered a lot of information pretty quickly um if you guys have any questions or if you're looking to book a trip and learn on it you know and try to you know put you on some fish with that technique hit me up um it's kind of winding down but you know next spring it does same thing so <laughs> you know uh keep that in mind for next year guys but yeah no I've, I've definitely learned a lot on this technique over the course of the last couple weeks and I will be throwing in fish catch clips, you know, and then throwing in all that stuff for you guys. Uh, so you guys can see what's going on with all that. Um, it's a fun technique. And, oh, one thing I didn't talk about. Let's talk about it really quick. The grass, right? You hook them, you swing on these fish, and they're peeling. And what do they do right away? They go right for the grass, right? Scares a lot of people. 
I'm not scared of that anymore. I was really scared of that. Um, I love it when they get in the grass. Because what you do, you know, a lot of guys will throw their Senkos or their power shot or whatever on like 20 pound tests. You hit them, you rip this big hole in their mouth and then you're running, you know, you're reeling them to the boat. They're peeling across. You're pulling them out of that grass and this hole in their mouth is getting bigger, ripping free. And next thing you know, they jump and spit your worm or spit your Senko. It's because you ripped a huge hole in that fish's mouth. I'm, I'm just saying, like, a lot of guys are like, oh, my rod's all, my rod's not dialed in, blah, blah, blah. No, you lose fish because you rip a huge hole in their mouth. That's, I do with punching all the time and frogging. You, you can rip a huge hole in a fish's mouth, a gash like that big. So that's how you lose those fish. This little tiny hook on the drop shot, little one knot. I mean, tiny little hook. PSI, barely any to puncture the, the fish's mouth and puncture a big fish's mouth, which is thicker. Uh, you know, goes right through and just little tiny pin pinhole in their mouth, right? They're stuck. Just keep tension, right? They go right for the grass. They get in the grass. You keep tension. You go up to them. You just keep tension, reel up, keep reeling as you're trolling up to them. You get right up next to that grass patch they're in and you freaking put that troll motor on like six or seven and you just freaking slam it, right? Shoots a huge pulse of, and you turn obviously the propeller uh, towards that grass and it sh shoots a whole pulse of water towards that grass patch. What is that fish gonna do? It's gonna freak out and just peel out of that grass. Well, you have your drag loose, hopefully. It's gonna peel out some drag, cool. It's gonna, the braid's gonna get in that grass. It's gonna cut that grass. Or your net man's there for when it peels out of the grass and he nets it. Easy money. I don't lose that many fish in the grass unless I try to pull them through the grass, which I've done that a couple of times because I don't, you know, it's a really big one and I'm all, you know, not thinking straight. So that's the only time I, I will lose fish um, in the grass with this lighter equipment or they rub you on something and break you off which I would say is rare. This line actually cuts the grass pretty well, I think. Uh, I use P-Line Tactical fluorocarbon, like I said, 10 or 12 pound, and then uh, uh, braid, 10 pound braid. I, I'll use uh, the cheapest braid I can find. Um, but I like that. I've been using some of that new uh, P-Line Spinex braid. Uh, I don't have it on this setup right here, but that's kind of what I'm gonna be, you know, spooling up with here soon again. Um, just getting some orders aligned in. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, don't be afraid to finesse them on the Delta guys. That's kind of the moral of the story and the moral of this video. Uh, it gets really big fish in me or in the boat for me this time of year. Um, you know, I've, I've caught, I don't know, between me and clients, I've caught a lot of five to seven pound fish. Yeah. Five to seven pound fish this year on the drop shot alone. Um, and talking to people around the Delta and, you know, they're doing the same thing. So it's not something to be afraid of. You kind of just got to go out there and do it and let it surprise you a little bit. Um, but yeah, so I will catch you guys on the next one guy or next video. Um, you know, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. If you like these videos, you know, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, and obviously like normal, if you're looking to book a trip, hit me up. Uh, fill in the form at my website or down at the bottom of my website and I'll contact you um, and we'll get some dates figured out to get you on the water. So cool. I will catch you guys on the next one. See ya. <laughs>
Look how green. Aw. Uh, People are looking. Little do they know. Drop shot. 